In this video, we'll be installing Oracle EBS R12.2.4. Process that we'll be going through will be similar to the release 12.2.3. We'll download the files from eDelivery, Oracle Cloud. We'll extract the files, the zip files. We'll then assemble the files together, concatenate them together. We'll import the files into Oracle Virtual Machine, and then we'll do the installation. The main requirements for this installation will be the VirtualBox, which can be obtained from VirtualBox.org. And you need a computer that has about 8 gig of RAM or more, and hard drive of at least 500 gig. I would normally say about 500. You can't you can put it on a laptop or a machine that has about 320 gig. We're going to download the files from Oracle eDelivery. So to do that, I'm going to go into HTTP eDelivery.oracle.com. If you don't have access to this site, you can sign in or register. It is actually free to sign in and register. So I'm going to log in uh, my username and password. You can also register or create an account from this page. So I'm just going to sign in. And once in, we then need to select the software that we want to download. But before that, we'll read the export restrictions and accept the conditions. So from the Oracle Software Delivery Cloud page, you want to filter by Linux OVM um, checkbox. So I'm just going to deselect programs, select Oracle OVM. These are actually the trial license and it's valid for i think it's about 30 days so i'm just going to type in ebusiness suite and the link i want is oracle vm appliance so oracle vm virtual appliances for oracle ebusiness suite and i'm selecting the platform the platform we need is the 64-bit that's the only option that we have anyway so let's select the option and I'm going to click on continue to take me to the next page. And this will give me another option to continue. Again, if you want another release, you can have a look at the list here. But I think the ones that we have, um, which is the default 12.2.4, is the one that we're going to download. Yes, that's the one. So we have about 41 files that can be downloaded here. But we only need about 16 files. So I'm going to show you the files that we need to download in a few moments so click on the continue button this brings you to the list oh sorry well we, we need to first of all read through the oracle standard terms and conditions you can also print this out and once you you've read through all of that that's quite a lot to read through there and you can then click on the accept the terms and conditions and click on continue so the list of files that we can download is all the files that we have here. You can either select the download all if you want to download all the files, but the ones we need are V52470-1 all the way down to V52477012. And to download, just click on the link and your browser will start to download the files. It tells me that it's going to take about five minutes or so to download this file. All right, once the files are downloaded, they're all kept in the downloads directory and we can extract the files by just clicking on the file and then copying and copying, or well, not just copying, but actually just clicking on the file itself and dragging it back into the downloads directory and then that will copy the file into the downloads directory. So do the same for each of the different files that you have in that directory. We should have about 16 files in total, and that will create 16 different um, .ova.0102 dot 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 and so on. Once all the files are extracted, they should be similar to what you have here on the screen. So what I'm going to do now is concatenate the files together. I'm going to bring them all together into one OVA file, and then we're going to import them into VirtualBox. So to do that, 
I already have a script that I've got here, which is using the copy slash B. And I'm just going to control A to copy all of so to select everything here. And I'm just going to do control C to copy, or you can also use your file, sorry, edit, copy, edit, paste to do the same function. So I'm going to open up my command and just going to paste this in and then press enter. Oops, I need to cd into the directory. So I'm going to go into directory called downloads. And that's my directory. I'm going to paste it back in. Press enter. And that will start to concatenate the files together. This will take a few minutes. And once completed, you should have a .ova file. You can grab yourself a cup of coffee or water or something just to relax for a few minutes whilst this has been extracted and concatenated. Once the concatenation is completed, you should have a file which is about 61.9 gig on your drive. And you should have this little orange icon here. What we're going to do now is import this file into VirtualBox. To do that, you first need to install VirtualBox. If you go to the virtualbox.org site, uh, wiki-downloads, or select downloads from the link, you're able to then select the link as appropriate to download VirtualBox. Once VirtualBox is installed, you then need to import the appliance. And to do that, you select File, Import Appliance. And then you select the drive where the file has been downloaded, so which is my CD, uh, sorry, C, yeah, PC downloads, and I'll select the file, which is my Oracle eBusiness Suite 12.2.4. Click on open and then next. Just and then select import, agree, and then it starts the importation process. The import should take about 30 minutes or so. Well, it's going to take about 30 40 minutes according to this. Um, again, this will depend on your machine, depending on how fast your processor is. Um, it's 11.43 now, so we'll come back in about 15, 20 minutes time and see what we have. Uh, you can see that now it's going back down to about 30 minutes. So it usually should take about, uh, about 30 to 40 minutes. Again, it's come back down to 29 minutes, so it's about half an hour. So let's uh, give ourselves a break, have some water, tea, coffee, uh, rest a little bit and then come back and continue. At 12 o'clock, we're back on the machine now and it's now telling us that it's going to take about 1 hour 14 minutes. So this is just to show you how unpredictable this importing process can be. And from previous versions that we've installed, it's in some machines it's taking one hour in some machines is taking 30 minutes but then uh, we're just using a machine here just for us to see how long it will really really take right okay so let's uh, give it another half an hour or so and then we'll come back and see where we are with it just got back to the machine and it's 12:52, so it's probably taking about an hour or so to extract the file so i will i would allow about an hour just to do the file extraction so what we're going to do now is to now start the virtual machine and configure it. Let's first of all look at the settings. So in the settings, well, as we can see that there is an invalid settings detected. So we click on the, and this is mainly just for the remote display. So I'm just going to go through some of the settings there on the VM. The advanced tells us where the files are installed. Well, the snapshot is installed. Then you have a description. Um, what I would suggest is, first of all, uncheck the CD and the floppy uh, box, checkbox, and then select hard disk and move this up to the boot order. So it would, first of all, boot with the hard disk. At the moment, the memory is set to six gig around six gig so that should be ideal um, you can reduce it to five gig if you're using an eight gig machine and it should still be okay to run at, at five gig 
of memory. That is the actual memory required. Processor, normally one processor should be okay. Um, acceleration, just you can leave everything as the default. So display, we'll leave that as default. For the remote display, we're going to uncheck this box and that will get rid of the error message that we, we're having. Video capture, we're not using any of those. Uh, story tells us the files, tells us where the file is actually stored. Um, on the C users administrator and then virtual box. And it tells us the actual size of the file that is used for the virtual box. It's about 256 gig of memory, of hard drive space, yeah. Audio, we don't need audio, so I'm gonna disable that. And then we now look at the network adapter. It's bridge adapter by default. I'll leave that as is, and then we'll log in um, to the VBox, and we can change that if we need to. You can also use NAT if you want to um, host only adapter. So again, you've got different different options that you have there. But I'm going to use the bridge adapter for now. I'm leaving serial ports as is, USB. I'll leave that as is, shared folders as is. So click on OK, and then we're going to start the virtual machine. So click on Start. Virtual machine uh, starts up. It's now starting the virtual machine. So there we go, um, it started up. Now I'm going to log in. First time we log in, we're gonna log in as, as root, the root user, and it will ask us to change the password for root. So I'm just going to put in a default password. And you need to do this for the password for Oracle as well, and also password for Apple Manager. There is a default database already created called EBSDB. And also, there is also a, a default environment that we can use called ebs.example.com. So autoconfig is currently configuring the application's environment. And that will take a few minutes. Now, what then happens is that it now starts to configure the templates uh, from all of the product tops. So now what we need to then do is enter vision to configure the vision demo instance. And that's it, all configured. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the scripts folder. We're going to review some of the scripts and look at the scripts that we need to run to start the machine and shut down the machine. So what I want you to do is select, uh, I'll just go into CD slash and we're logged in as root. So I'm going to go into CD slash U01, install vision and the scripts. So all the scripts are actually in this directory. So that's the scripts there. So I'm going to run the one to start the database. The database already are, but just to show you the one to run, dot slash and it start vision db dot sh. Oh, we need to start it as Oracle user. So to do that, you do su Oracle, login as Oracle, dot slash vision db dot sh oops dot slash start vision db dot sh and that starts the, the the database so after the database has started you then need to start the uh, application server and start the application server to start the application server Again, just to show you the scripts, the script is called 
vision apps um, start vision start vision apps dot sh so I'm going to do dot slash start vision apps dot sh and that will actually start the um, the, the middleware so and, and that basically is how to actually start the the server um, in case you run into issues and you want to restart it you can always restart it the way I've just started it just now and what we'll do once that started we'll I'll then go into the host machine and set the um, the host file where we should be able to then log into the the, the server once completed starting the web logic admin server so it's starting the form server now that the server is actually started so let's now go in and have a look at some of the config that we need to do okay so that's all installed so let's have a look at the um, IP address the IP address so if I do if config oops config that tells me the IP address that's used 192.168.0.25 I need to insert that IP address in my host file to be able to open this host machine so and then the host name um, host name will give us the host name of the machine so we can now go into our host file and then enter those details in so what I'm going to do I'm going to go into my host file which is in C drive uh, Windows and it's on the system 32 and it's on the drivers etc hosts so that's the that's the installation done I'm just gonna log in from another machine just to show you uh, from a Mac so on my MacBook, <coughs> I'm going to enter the details as well. Log in as root. And I want to go to my etc file. So that's me with my EBS at example. Uh, let me just stick an EBS at the end of this. Not necessary, but um, saving the file. And then I'm going to go to my browser, example.com operations. And if I enter the password, which is welcome. There we go. So I'm able to view the homepage. And I've also got Java 8 installed. Um, this works very well with Java 8 and you don't need to uh, fiddle about with any of the Java settings just very quickly it will open up in, um, in the browser and the forms opens up as well so thank you very much uh, for watching the video I'll be, I'll be putting up some more videos on release 12.2.4 Thank you.